is up jets fans jets by jimmy back with another video and today i got a very special guest one of my favorite people in the jets world my man kevin jackson aka at spotty blackman kevin what's up man today's a great day my man i appreciate you having me on thank you very hey. much hey uh, we're, we're talking about carrie vincent i gotta get the other defensive back in the room that's brother what i'm saying yeah look uh, we'll, you know roast and toast we'll, we'll, we'll play opposite sides on this right? <laughs> man i'm telling you you go you put us 20 years in the past chat that I, i'm right telling now. you man we're we're Rebus and Cromartie, whoever yeah, wants look, to be who. <laughs> seriously, look, I, it doesn't even matter. Both of them were nice. Um, I'm just imagining uh, 20 years ago at, at the tailgate, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, <laughs> right? <laughs> let's go. Let's somebody pull the ball out. Let's go. All right. So what we're doing, guys, we're going to break down some film on Kerry Vincent Jr. I think this is a very viable target in probably the fourth or even fifth round of this draft. And the reason that he's going to fall that far, despite how high I am on him, is because he did opt out in 2020 um, and where other defensive backs from LSU, like Derek Stingley Jr. actually played. Um, I think that kind of hurt him a little bit. I get his situation. I, I, I don't think players opting out, I, I don't think on a social level it should hurt him, but I get it on a sample size level. Um, especially when you're coming out, you got something to prove, especially when you do like Kerry Vincent Jr. Uh, he kind of did this thing. He was a true freshman starter, starter all three years in college, and then senior year he he opts out. Like when you're trying to solidify who you are, that senior year is important, man. Especially when you decide to come back after your junior year. You know what I mean? So, um, I I think that's the reason that he's gonna fall. But uh, we'll we'll get into the tape, and and this kid is he's actually electric. He he grew up. Uh, in Port Arthur, Texas, just across the border from Louisiana. So he's a down south kid. Uh, he's got that mindset, the dirty south mindset. I absolutely love it. Uh, he recently ran in his pro day. He ran a 4-3-3. However, he was clocked at a 4-2-4 on an official time throughout the 20, in the 2019 season. So the kid's a burner, and he can play on the outside. But, you know, being on, being there with Derek Stingley, you're – I don't care if Derek Stingley's a freshman. You're you're going to get moved. like that. Stingley's going to cover your your number one receiver. So, um, Kevin, any thoughts on this kid? Yeah, man. Listen, I agree with a lot of what it is that you said about him. Um, I know that you know there are a lot of strengths as, as far as the athleticism is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, really excited about seeing that transition. Um, I think part of and uh, in, in, in addition to um, what you described about why he may drop, I think it's because he's got some technique issues, right? Um, a little bit, yeah. But, but yeah, no, he's that, gotta that, work on it. Yeah, he's just gotta work on it. And and uh, professional coaching is probably gonna be able to do a lot to kind of swing some of those things. Um, mm -hmm. Also, having an opportunity to play on the outside, I think is a little different also. I mean, if you've ever played, you know, kind of slot, it's a, it's a different ball game, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, he's also he's five ten, one eighty five, yeah. and being pushed into a nickel role. You know, I I, I get some of the some of the things I'll highlight that we'll highlight in in the film. Yeah. Um, I I understand why he's doing some of it, but it's still it's still some aspects of his game that's got to change. Yeah, well, you know, he'll grow hopefully, and uh, you know, sure. to be perfectly honest with you, if we put him in the right situation, especially um, on this defense where he's not going to have to be Superman. Um, I think it actually bodes well for his development, uh, especially considering the coaching staff that we're going to bring in to help these guys. So let's go to the film, bro. Let's, let's check him out. All right. Let's hit it. So this is Kerry down here. He's number five. Opened up decent. Ran with him well. Look at the hands. Oh, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay. So he actually can catch, which is awesome. Yeah, and his if you go if we come back a little bit on it too, his back pedal. That's yeah. a little bit of an issue for me right here. Yeah, I, I think I, he turned and ran pretty quick. You know, what I'm he saying? did. He opened up too soon, I think. But right here, that back pedal, he lost yeah, balance. Yeah, he did. Um, I I think at that point is maybe it's just you know him trying to read and and, and recognize where he's going. Um, it mm -hmm. did. Look, it did look like he lost it for a second, but then I think maybe him trying to maintain some contact with the wide receiver also may have thrown him off a little bit. Um, I think he located the ball and he he immediately disregarded the receiver because he knew that was his ball. So like, when you, um, when you 
when you watch the tape, you'll see because th there was contact. And I think that I think the contact maybe is more of what it is that I meant because there was contact there as he was, you know, kind of turned. You see, right there, yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah, that that to me just that maybe might have, uh, you know, kind of addressed that little that little stumble, but. Uh, but he's still that. on that kid like a blanket. Perfectly exactly. legal. Exactly. You can have your arm around him as long as you're not on the outside of the receiver's arm. Mm -hmm. You can have your arm at his waist. Like he's covering the kid like a blanket. Yeah. You know? I, I, th I and think there. Got, Look at that grab. Yeah. He got lucky. He got lucky at reading this because if this is, uh, you know, we'll just call it, if, if this is a hitch, you know what I'm saying? Or if this is an out or something like that. He's at a position because he double, a double move would have killed him. Yeah, right there. oh look, he he, he turned and, and, and ran uh, yeah. quick. He bailed way too quick, I think. In that a uh, hitch and go, that's a touchdown. Yeah, for the he, 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 I'm not sure if he'd been able to cover. Let, but let's see the recovery because obviously he's uh he's super duper fast. So, um, the recovery, you know, I'm sure we'll have a, a an example of it here coming. But um, that is where the speed really comes in, right? Let's yeah. see. Let me. I think this is another one. Yeah, this is the second one. Ooh. Look at the hit. That's what I'm talking about. See, now this is what I was talking about as far as earlier before being in zone. Like, he's right here. Yeah. And his his break on the routes Closing speed. is top level. Closing speed is crazy. His break on the routes is really good. So Like, the, you saw the quarterback's eyes get fixed, and he was already moving. Like, his anticipation is really top-notch. He's going to be really good in zone. So, like, on a, on that Ulbrich and Sala style defense, I think he'll be really good. Yeah. I'm trying to locate him here. Yeah. Another big hit. <laughs> the, the blur. <laughs> the blur. Okay. I see. That answer. grab, that's yeah. the one. So he's wearing 15 here. I don't know how that happened, but. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's... But this grab. Oh, the, the concentration, though. Yeah. Because it was tipped. It's not like, you know, it's not like it was just a clean ball. Um, that was awesome. And that's it, a clean, that's a clean catch. Arm under the ball. Yeah. Like yeah. that right there is a clean interception. And it's a one handed grab. He was one handed, but he was also going the opposite way, if you saw. Yeah. Let me get back to it. Uh, so he's right here, I yeah. think. Uh, yeah, right here. That's him. He was going in and had to break back. He was going in to make the hit. He was going in so, to make the hit. The, the, the reaction time is is spectacular here. Yeah, it, it really is. And that, that leads me to think he didn't participate in the three-cone drill, which I don't understand why these players, especially a player who opted out, if you're going to your pro day, why are you going to your pro day to just run a 40? You know? I, I, I have to admit, if he hasn't been really playing ball in a while, um, maybe – the technical aspects of an aren't as good as what it is that he would like them to be. When 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 you when you make a decision like opting out after having the type of career that he's had, mm -hmm. um, it 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 it's, it reeks of, of of trying to protect himself um, and from could be you know, like sort of from a bad statistical outing, right? Like it doesn't look it doesn't look good. Like he would he would uh, you know test out out of the top ten at his position. Mm -hmm. um, but it still doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be out of the top 10 with regards to the play on the field. So those guys, they're doing that to protect themselves. I think I, I probably would have still done it, but that's just me. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a competitor. And some of those things are like mental aspects. Yeah. And that's also like, everybody's like, we're pointing out a couple things that are, that are flaws, but they're fixable. So I still think fourth, fifth round for this guy, I still think it's a steal. And I still think, like, if you can – it's a low-risk signing at that point. You know, it's a low-risk draft pick in the middle rounds. Because if he doesn't work out, that's fourth or fifth round pick. But if he does, if he does – I would, I would I would, really be happy if we could be the beneficiary or something like that, considering um, we basically robbed the entire league for Bryce. Uh, for I, Bryce. Think so. I think we did, too. I think Bryce is going to be really good. Look, I, me and my brother talk about that all the time. And uh, that kid, is is he's going to be a special player. I mean, he it, b before the injury, he was already at that level. Um, so, I mean, really, this is more about just him getting his confidence back. Add a guy like this one, or, you know, I guess what, we have some other options maybe a little earlier also. Yeah, I, th I think we'll be okay. So moving on, so that that was a great grab. Yeah, yeah. tipped, and then oh, I guess this deserved another one, okay. <laughs> another replay, D different angle. Okay, so this is uh, ooh, ball skills. You know, I, I kind of jumping the route. 
yeah, I kind of wish we would have seen, uh, you know, was how, where, how he was positioned before that. Um, because it, it looked like it may have just been where, uh, hey, this is what I'm talking about here. Okay. See, that's him in the zone, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's, like a, little, his, he's a little handsy. His cha- he, yeah, but I, I'd rather have a – oh, sad. Oh, wow. That's that 4-2-4 four, four speed right there. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, I'd rather have a, a corner that's going to be aggressive and hands-on. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not going to be called – Every time, yeah. you know what I mean. As long as but, it doesn't get to Buster Screen level, <laughs> you know? yeah. As long as like, <laughs> if you're not so blatant about it that the refs are just sitting there eyeballing you the entire time, like. But I, I want my receivers to get in the head, or I want my corners to get in the heads of those receivers. Like I will mug you, I will manhandle you, and you're gonna, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna, you might catch a ball or two, but you're yeah. gonna feel it. Look. That was always something. I always had to you. You, know, you got to thump the receiver early in the game. Man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to thump them early. Look, if, if you're gonna if, if you're gonna attempt to block, you know you're gonna have to make them earn that. <laughs> I I loved bump and run coverage uh-huh. playing That's corner, good. man. It's my favorite. Like one. just getting them a real quick, just a chest yeah. check right there, just on the line. They're like, wait, yeah, hold like up. even that even that half a second, man. They're now they're off their timing. That everything everything is disrupted and more than likely mm-hmm. if, if the play was designed to go to them i'm going to have that much more of a chance to get my hands on the ball period yeah now they're because even then they're going to try to the receiver is now going to try to get back on timing mm-hmm. so they're going to be telegraphing everything okay. man i'll be telegraphing right as i'm stepping in uh, to take it from him that's for sure 100 percent. man i was like one of my favorite things okay yeah there's that sack again he just is able to his bend ability around that or on that tackle as well. Yeah. Tackle well, didn't even see him coming. Right. Well, he's he's the athlete, right? That that was that's the kind of uh, that's the the positives on his kid. Right. Right. The athleticism. Okay. Okay. Now, right there, let's show, please show me a replay on that. Yeah, sure. From deck. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he reads. Oh, he's right there. Uh, yeah. Just just again being in good position. Oh, we see he's not afraid to get that helmet in there. No, nope. he gets in the box. He gets in the box. That's, what that's I'm for sure. I love it. I love that. Man, you don't even know. Bryce has that same ability. I, th- I he's think up that's top. Right. That's something else. There he goes. Oh no, he's in the middle. Yeah, just yeah. see. And this is I don't I don't know if it's going to show it. So I'll just say what I what I've seen before is when he's in man coverage, he focuses on staying with the receiver so much. And then the receiver will turn to look for the ball and he'll keep focused on the receiver and put his hands up to disrupt. Yeah. I just, I hate that, man. I just want my defender, defensive back to get their head around, look for the ball, locate the ball, play the ball, not the receiver. You know what I mean? Hand on the hip, like put your hand out, keep contact and look for the ball. Exactly. And, oh, I think you've made a point earlier about the, about um, it saving you from uh, pass interference penalties as well. And I think yeah. that, that's a huge part of what what the professional game should be teaching right you can't you can't be called for pass interference for running into a receiver if you're not looking at the receiver so i mean that's a way to that's a way to put the odds in your favor you know in a very pass interference driven league today um you got to do what you can to to make he's got to rely he's got to learn to rely on his speed to keep up with the receiver and that he's just got to rely on his awareness and his speed, and he's got to find that ball. He's got to look for the ball. But and, and, in zone, yeah. if we're playing, if we're playing like that four-two-five zone hybrid that they're talking about with the four-three defense, oh, yeah. he is going to be great. Look, the one thing that again, you, you can't teach athleticism, right? You can't coach athleticism, but that the athleticism actually, you know, accentuates the technique. If, if when mm-hmm. when it gets with some NFL caliber coaching, and they 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 teach him that technique. The athleticism is just going to make him. It's going to make him shine. I think. So I think he's. Gonna, I, I, I still think he's going to be really good. Yeah, I, I, I'll say this. Um, he's really he's around the ball quite a bit. Huh? You know what I'm saying? It's he, just, he, he's a hawk, man. It's not like he's you know. You, you don't see a lot of distance between him and the and the receiver when the ball gets there. That's for sure. No, he can close the gap regardless. And I love the swagger. I love the attitude. As a DB, you got to have it. You got to have it. Look at that. See what I'm talking about. So he cuts the routes right, right in his pocket, though. Right in his yeah. pocket, which is where he's supposed to be. Okay, he sniffs this one out. Uh, yep, yeah. man. 
So oh, that's a three. <laughs> look, that 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 acceleration. Um, is him up here into the backfield. Next level. Oh. The awareness, like he knows, he watches the quarterback, knows where that ball is going, and just attacks the point of of, of connection. That, that's, film uh, study. that's film study, too. Now. We gotta get oh, start. 100%. Yeah, you got to know who you're playing against. And this is Oklahoma, too? Uh, yes. Another another play. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. But he doesn't get fooled. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the <laughs> – <from, laughs> That's my ball. You, you mentioned Kevin – you mentioned he's always right there. He's always right there. Well, he's about 20 yards away. <laughs> that's mine. Yeah. Look, that's where the athleticism comes in. 100%. Because that was a bad pass. But uh, for him to close as much ground as he did, awesome. Look at him wrap up right there. That's another That's another one that, that is a big thing for me is I'm a very form tackling type of a person. Yeah. Yeah. I hate when somebody just throws a shoulder know who you are know your role like if you're a big 260 pound linebacker you know you can probably throw a shoulder on a receiver and he's going to go down yeah. but if you're a 5 10 185 pound defensive back you better wrap, be wrapping up that wrap guy. him up wrap him up period and look, look he throws the shoulder grabs the ankle that guy's and, going and down man look he pushes through you know what i'm saying so it's not like it's not like he's afraid to make the tackle he's running through the guy right which is exactly what we want to see love it all right, where's he at? Okay. Oh, Look at that. He, he was the guy in motion. The guy, man. This 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 kid is a, is a specimen. Look at that. Okay. You know what? I I, I keep I keep seeing all of these lists, right? And are they talking about how many how many cornerbacks are are in the top one hundred you know players uh, available? And uh, I kind of think there's going to be a run on cornerbacks early. We might need to kind of. I don't know, man. If, if if you're correct about him being available in the fourth or fifth round, that's highway robbery if we if we take him there. Uh yeah, and like that's where he's falling is like uh right around the fifth round in most of the mocks. Crazy. And I and he's just he's he's another he's the twenty twenty one Bryce Hall. He's gonna be a steal. Like the speed. Imagine Bryce Hall, Kerry Vincent Jr. on the outside with Good coaching, Kevin. With right? good coaching. and with the ridiculous front seven that we're going to put in front of him. Oh, dude! <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm confident that our that if we got Kerry Vincent, I'm confident in Bryce Hall and Kerry Vincent to actually hold their defenses and hold their yeah. coverages for five, six, seven seconds. They won't have to. Exactly. Like, the quarterback's not going to have three seconds to throw the ball anymore. We, like, we this talk- is an exciting time for this defense. Exactly. We we're talking the other day about how the front seven being good, but if your cornerbacks are lax, you know, the, the, the upper echelon quarterbacks will pick that apart, right? Mm-hmm. Um, them guys that, that that have the quick reads and then they get the ball out quick, you know, it, it might not be, you know, huge gains, uh, but, you know, even five or seven yards, you know, it could be the difference between stopping them, you know, on, on third down. Yeah, five and, or seven and, yards every time. Exactly. Not. See, and, and that in itself is a problem. But the, these guys, man, I just have a really good feeling about, you know, the, the, them being able to press at that line and if, if you're talking about three seconds be- before uh, we actually start to get this pressure, there's going to be a lot of turnovers generated by this defense, I think. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really excited, man. I really am. The, the, the defense has the possibility this season of being so extremely good. Oh, right? it's exciting. I, yeah. I, 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 I get like 2009, 2010 vibes. You know what? These 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 kids, man, I mean, and, and just, you know, we're projecting – this guy across from Bryce right now. Um, but you know, when we were talking earlier about the Revis and Crow thing, um, those are those are those are guys that you know they they would have to aspire to to be like those guys, you know, sure. In the term. But I had high hopes for Kyle Wilson too, because exactly. he's Boise State Bronco from my area, but I'm so sorry. I, I apologize about that. Yeah. I apologize about Kyle Wilson, New York. Okay. I'm I sorry. can I, look. I you just I, my, my eyes going to twitch now talking about Kyle Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> that, he was that, so that, good in that college. Dude gave, that dude gave me nightmares, man. I could I could not even. He anyway, was so good, so yeah. good in college. We'll dude. We'll, we'll, we'll just uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that these guys uh, don't don't succumb to to that type of uh, pressure. Um, but um, the attitude, like you said, the swag. Um, is is mandatory in cornerbacks, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you didn't have it, 
Um, I wasn't sure if I if I wanted to play alongside you. I'm just going to keep it real. We yeah. we, we had to think that, um, yeah, there ain't going to be no passing going on in this game, right? There ain't going to be none of that. So um, we had we had the air traffic control when I was in high school. That's what we called ourselves. Had little towels and the whole thing made air traffic control um, because there wasn't really nothing getting in. And and our defense actually has the ability to be that, um, especially considering the pressure that we're going to apply to the quarterback. Man. Yeah. Um, I, I like the kid's athleticism. Um, again, the fact that he is as close as he is on almost every one of those plays that we just looked at, um, it really bodes well for what the expectations will be um, for us. And again, because I have such high expectations for Bryce and, and you know, honestly, just – you know, I, I kind of thought in the beginning, bless Austin was going to be better than he's been. And he did have some flashes. Yeah, he had some flashes that the end of that rookie season when he came back from injury. And even, you know, to a certain extent, he had a few flashes uh, beginning of last season. But um, the way that it's shaken out, um, I'm thinking the possibility is we may need to add two corners. So uh, we're going to do another one of these videos coming up soon. Um, I think yeah, I want to – I'll probably be checking out Paulson at Devo. Nice. Because the, I love him coming out of Stanford, but I, I just, I'm not saying that cornerback. Obviously, I played corner. You played corner. I'm not saying it isn't important. What I'm saying is, we've, we're better than people think we are. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And I think that where the, where where people have it right is our O line. We need O interior O line. Present. We have to we have to build that, and I would not be mad at Joe Douglas. In fact, I would be applauding Joe Douglas if, if the first back. three picks are quarterback, center, guard. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I can see the talent level being where that might warrant uh, us doing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, if, if the board falls the way that maybe we're expecting it to, um, the run on cornerbacks may not actually really happen until you know that third round. Um, and we, and we've, we've got two third round picks, right? So yeah, so that's what I'm thinking as well because the, there's the big three: J.C. Horn, Patrick Sertan, and yeah. Caleb Farley. Farley. Yeah. And if those three are gone, do you have like the middle tier, like the Eric Stokes and the Calvin Newsom? Yeah. Um, but those I think are around two guys. And maybe if you're desperate for a corner tail end of first round guys, but if I if those top three are gone, I just don't want to use a premium pick on on one of the other guys you know eric stokes is a burner out of georgia but i just i like carrie vincent better and i think we can get better value out of him so eric eric stokes is a monster you know me being in georgia i've had an opportunity to see him he actually is another uh corner that i think is is probably a little better technically um which is again why he'll probably go a little ahead of some sure, of absolutely um but to, to your point, um, some of the athleticism that we see in in that that mid round or the mid tier kind of guys, um, it's still above average, right? It's still mm -hmm. above average, even when you're talking about you know six or seven or eight on the list. Um, all of those guys really have uh, potential if you know placed in the right situation to be really good. And I, I just really have a, a, a great feeling that this is going to be the right situation, at least defensively this season. Sure, and it's not like they're bad there's not like this is where we most people get so off base right yeah. is like they feel first round talent or nothing and i just i don't see it you know what i mean like most of the best offensive linemen are fifth or sixth uh, rounders yeah, mid-round guys exactly same thing like with running backs I mean, you figure i know offensive line is a, is a, a different animal when it comes to that but the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is is that you're still going to find quality guys I, be, I was saying this, uh, you know, a few years ago because we kept talking about how um, the offensive line had been neglected the way that it has. And, and what did we end up, you know, we, we drafted uh, – when, when did we draft Chuma? Was Chuma like a third or fourth round pick or something like that or, or beyond that? Um, something like that. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember to be honest with you. It was, it was – that choice to me in particular was one that it was a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, I, I originally was like, hey, I don't get it. Buddy went to USC, played with Sam. Like I understand it from that side. Yeah, but so I mean, like it's 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 not like he, he was a guy. yeah, really. And then he came here and 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 still hasn't done much of anything. So, um, the the depth is is going to be an issue for us. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys that we're talking about bringing in as of right now are going to be guys that contribute regardless. And uh, 
I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm actually more excited about some of these picks that may be, you know, the second tier guys, um, because I know that when Joe Douglas starts to swing for the fences, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be looking to upgrade from these guys in particular. And these guys are actually pretty good. Right. Yeah. So I, I think, I think we're, we're headed in the right direction and I think it's a faster, it's a faster turnaround than most people are going to give us credit for. So um, look, I don't think anybody wants to give us credit at all. You know, no, that, that'll never happen. We can win the Super Bowl. They're like, well, you know, everybody had everybody yeah. else in the NFL had COVID. So right. Just, yeah. It, what, <laughs> what, is that, what is that? Two Super Bowls? What, like you guys are a dynasty now? Like, come on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. But my, my point when we had uh, when we had DJ on Weapons Hot yesterday. Yeah. My point remains is like everybody's worried about like Miami getting Kyle Pitts or they're worried about Trey Lance going to New England. I don't care. I don't care. I want Buffalo to be as good as possible. I want Miami to be as good as possible. I hate the Patriots. I still want them to be as good as possible because we will not be a fake dynasty. We're going to be winning this stuff in the hardest division in football, and that's what I want. We're gonna we're right. gonna end up being another uh, you know AFC North or the AFC West. You know, we're, 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 this is gonna be a powerhouse conference. What? Yeah. What is what does the Patriots have really to talk about? What do they have to brag about? You get into the playoffs every year because of the the Jets, Dolphins, and Bills are always bad. Yeah. Like really, that's how it happened. Well, you figure that that's that's five to six. That you know what four, four to six wins every season. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. From them, so. Almost um, half your season, almost yeah, half your season, basically. So I mean, the, the the difference I think was when Tom Brady was here, that uh, you know that they they really they, they just played well, man. As, as much as I hate that guy, and, and I can't even believe I actually used his correct name. Uh, just Tim now. Brody. It's Tim, actually. So, you know, Tim Brody. But, but Tim Brady. Um, anyways, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That that guy is, uh, you know, now he's gone, and uh, there isn't anybody on that level to even. Uh, feel like we, we should be afraid of because I'll just keep it real. Josh Allen isn't necessarily the guy that, that strikes fear in our hearts. Um, we, we always play them tight. If we had anything resembling an offense, I think we probably would have beat them last season, um, probably, possibly twice. Um, but then, you know, we had uh, he who should not be ever discussed again um, at the he- at the helm. Yeah, and uh, it, it, look, we've just seen some incredibly bad football. And I'm 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 excited for this fan base to actually see real football played on our team. Yeah, totally. And it's it's coming. It, it, look, it's here. To be honest with you, and, and my expectation, and you know I say this all the time, expectations are bad uh, for Jets fans. But my expectation is, you know, I think we talked about this on the show the other night. Double digit wins, man. Um, because I, I'm saying even, eleven. Even even if it's just this season, and and I, I made this point earlier. Historically, first-year head coaches have have great seasons, and great seasons with regards to this team has always been nine to ten wins. Right, Ty Bowles won. Uh, Ty Bowles won one night. What was it? Nine, uh, ten wins. Um, his his rookie season. Um, so, I, I think this is a better situation just overall. It has a lot to do with Joe Douglas, but you know what Robert Sala has done with this with this coaching staff. I don't know, man. It's it, it's being lauded around the league as one of the best, specifically because he went and he got guys that are progressive thinking, up and coming guys that have actually produced results in 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 you know in certain respects. So, and that's got Jet fans mad. I they're, they're like, oh yeah, now we got Lafleur. He's just going to be gone in two years as a head coach somewhere. Like, it, I agree with Kevin it, Robbins. Kevin Robbins said it on live rounds. He's like, I would love to have that problem. Exactly. Our coaching staff is so good that they're going on to be head coaches. Exactly. Give that, me that problem. Right? Come that, on. That I would have to imagine that that means that there's a pipeline and the next guy up um, will yeah. probably not only be able to have that same, but to elaborate and grow on what it is that we're doing. So I'm excited, man. Look, this, this is – and Jets fans are trying to soften the blow, right, because we're so used to having – things that we're positive about and then have them break down and, and mm-hmm. you know, shit, shit to bed and that whole entire season, you know, is a joke by the time we get to damn uh, October. 
Um, so, I, yeah. I think we're past that, and I think it's going to be great. But yeah. um, we're gonna we're gonna stop it here. Uh, Kevin, I want to thank you so much for breaking this guy down with me. He's one of my favorite prospects coming out this year. So yeah, um, looks had like to, it's well observed. Looks like it's well observed. Yeah, uh, had to had to definitely get another cornerback on to to break it down, guys. As you can see on the scroll, give Kevin a follow at Spotty Blackman on Twitter. Uh, you won't be disappointed. He is an absolute maniac on Twitter. I, I love reading some of his stuff. It's it's pretty good. Um, but also, I want to say, give Weapons Hot a sub. I'll put all this stuff down in the description below. Give Weapons Hot a sub. You can see us next week, next Friday night at well, we have, 8.45 we have, Eastern. Yeah. Uh, after dark? Okay. Yep, after dark. Love it. Coming next week, man. So, uh, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you all for being here. Much appreciated. As always, guys, jet up.